So it took me a long time, but I have not posted many videos about building rodent coils and such because I've been building a tester. This is a magnetic pole detector. Um, it tests um, north and south. Um, you can see it's got a switch on the bottom. LEDs in here. And as I get this magnet closer or further away, more or less LEDs light up. That'd be my north pole. This is my south pole. So I can detect north and south. And it's got a nice long probe on it so I can stick it in things. But the main reason I built this was for testing the um, rodent coil with the magnetic poles being a monopole as Marco Rodin and Jamie Berturf, I believe his name is, showed. So that's the main reason I built this and now I can start testing with it. So in this video I'm actually going to show you the full process. Here's the finished product. It looks like a mess. It was supposed to be a mess. I designed it as a mess. But functionally, a functional mess. So on off button down here. It runs off two 9 volts. It's got a, a 12 volt regulator in it and a hall sensor chip on the end. I can actually detect how strong the magnetic field is. I can detect north or south and I, I can use it as a, a, a gauss meter to an extent. Um, I, could, I think I can put a piece of metal on the end here and it would actually induce uh, the magnetic flux would induce into that piece of metal and then that would in turn make my chip work. I ran this into work and I put it in a uh, an electrical panel and it just went crazy. So I know it does pick up magnet magnetic lines of flux without anything on the end of it. So enjoy. Um, hopefully next I'll be able to do in that uh, other experiment. So enjoy this video of building my magnetic pole detector. See ya. Okay, so I have decided to build my own magnetic pole tester and I think this is going to work. I'm going to show you what I'm doing and I will uh, show you when it's done uh, and hopefully through the process. It's going to take me a little while. That's okay. Um, so here's what I've done. I've taken the original fan chip that I've shown you guys um, what I use for my double pulse motor. The first one works really nice. Um, <clears throat> I posted this, these pictures on the second video of my double pulse motor and uh, I desoldered just the uh, a hall sensor chip and here's what it looks like or how it's supposed to be connected you've got four pins on it the one pin goes through a resistor to a diode <coughs> to your positive voltage one goes to ground <coughs> excuse me and the other two are your output voltage okay um, what I found out I've got it hooked up right now what I found out is that it's always on um, the chip is always on the hall sensor is always on and basically the voltage just varies um, between your north and south pole. So I'm going to have to use a uh, voltage comparator to make this work. Um, here you can see my LEDs. That's the output voltage. They're really dim because the voltage is really low. Um, here's the hall sensor chip. There's the number on it. It's uh, I would tell you what it is but I can't because it's uh, service mount numbers. There's my resistor and diode and one resistor for the LED. Now what I'll show you here is uh, I got a magnet here. It's north here and south here so uh, north south north south okay or vice versa either way so I'm gonna get this magnet close to my hall sensor you can see my voltage change see that now if I switch polarities it changes the other way okay so I'll have to use a comparator to make this work now if you see my LEDs uh, there is with the no magnet See the one's bright now and the other one's dim, and they change. Okay? If I pull out this resistor, so let's disconnect the LEDs, you can see this a lot better on the voltage. So there's one polarity. There's the other polarity of magnetic current. North pole, south pole. See how they change? So I'm going to have to use some sort of a comparator. And if the voltage, uh, and it does, it varies as you get close. So I'll get closer and closer. You can see how it, how it climbs as you get a more strong field. What I'd like to do is put some sort of a uh, um, digital uh, voltage converter 
to where I can turn on LEDs in a pattern, up and back down, and up and back down. I don't know I can actually see how strong the magnetic field really is. I don't know if that's going to work, but uh, right now this is what I got. So I'm going to have to build and design the rest on my own. So I'll let you know. See you. Okay, guys, so I've been messing with this for a long time and it really made me mad, but uh, I got this going. Okay, I ran this hall sensor into a um, voltage comparator. That's uh, an LM393. And this thing works like a charm, but I still need to um, do some fine tuning. But this is just an idea I had and it worked. So check it out. Uh, this magnet I have is very, very, very weak. It is a very weak magnet. And uh, I'm going to show you how well this sensor works. Okay, here you go. So this LED. Uh, will either get brighter or darker depending on this magnet. Now, uh, you can't really see the depth here. Let me point it this way. Okay, let me get this magnet close. It gets brighter, turn it around, and it goes off. So, look how much distance I got. Let's see if I can get down here further. Okay, I'm about, it's sensing about an inch. It starts sensing about an inch away. You can see how much distance I still got. Okay. So that tells me this chip is that sensitive. Um, my op amp. I'm sorry, my uh, voltage comparator is hooked up just like this. With my two sensors connected to positive and negative. And voltage and output. And that's it. That's a schematic for something else I built. But, uh, yeah, as you can see. Works like a charm. So, next I'm going to uh, do some more work on the idea past this, but I wanted to show you that as a piece of the puzzle. I'm going to bed now. See ya. Okay, so after about four days of nothing working, finally got something working here. <clears throat> so, my light bar, you can see I'm running a, uh, a quad um, LM. 339N, uh, it's a voltage comparator, and uh, I've got four LEDs hooked up to it. I plan on putting 10 LEDs on each one of these, so it should be pretty cool. But here it is. Uh, there's my comparator, and here's my sensor. Now, when I get this uh, very weak, weak magnet, which would be about the lowest I'm going to be using, close to this, see my first LED lit up. And when I get closer, my second LED lights up. If I get all the way down there, all they all light up. But you can see how close I am. I'm like all the way against the sensor. Now if I get a magnet that's a little bit stronger, you can see the same effect, but from further away. So this is actually telling how much magnetism I have coming off. And if I go even one more bigger, find the pole on this thing. It's a good way to find the pole too. As soon as you get a higher voltage you know you made it. So there you go. It still needs some fine tuning. But uh... Zoom out a little. So, that's a little update. Hopefully I can get this thing finished. Okay, so, I got both north and south on a four LED array. Here you go. There's uh, south or north, I don't know which one. Flip the magnet over. And there you go. So if I take this uh, big magnet here, and spin it. You can see what happens. Okay. That's it for now. This thing's really, really tricky to calibrate, but I think I'll uh, get better as I go. Okay, so I spent a week trying to figure out why I couldn't get an op amp to work with this chip. I figured it out. I had two bad op amps. 
So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to smash it. So I chucked the other chip and I don't know where it went. But guess what? I found this one. And you're done. Now I feel so much better. So that's what an op amp looks like when you smash it. It really, really upsets me. <sighs> no more bad chips for me. Finally got this thing looking good. Here's my schematic. I'll post this on the uh, on the uh, thing so you guys can download it in the description. And uh, here's what I got. I got it on my boards, but I've got it on this proto board so I can still play with it. My sensor is actually in this tube. It's in the very end here. Run right down here and I've got cables coming out of it. So if I take a magnet, let's say this one, get it close here. closer I get it, the stronger my I'd be south and this would be north. Still needs a little fine-tuning, but uh, you get the idea. So I'll fine-tune this and I'll show you some more. Hey, I got it finished. Um, everything except for putting it in the tube. So here it is. It's a little chaotic. There's a lot of stuff going on. Two capacitors back here for the uh, uh, regulator right there. Uh, two uh, uh, potentiometers there. They're like 10 turn, I believe maybe even 20 turn. And uh, they adjust my lowest setting on here so I can fine tune it. And then uh, I got my wand here. It's just a piece of tubing and my uh, devices in the end, the hall sensor. It just connects to my board. And all I gotta do is connect it to power. Uh, anything above 12 volts, up to about 18 or so. Alright, I'll give you a little demo. Here we go. Alright, so I'm gonna hook it up to power. Positive and negative. Okay. And I got my wand here. Can't even get it in the screen. I'll just put a magnet up to it. Got a neosphere. I'm rotating it. You can see those two turn on. And as I uh, get it focused better on the center of the magnet, cool. Show you when it's all packed into a uh, tube. Okay, check it out. I totally got it palm sized handheld I'll be able to just pack this in a tube got my uh, bar in there if you will hooked up to this battery right now set this camera back okay so if I can get all this in the picture I got a screwdriver here it's magnetized it's not real strong it's just a little bit but watch my LEDs See, I'm getting a pole reading as I move it down to the other pole. Yeah, awesome. Get this sphere magnet here. As I rotate it different directions, see I get different poles. So I can find my strongest pole. Should be looks to appear about right there. Cool.
Peace.